after a spree of car burglaries and attempted break-ins along Janice Drive in Spotswood, New Jersey, the culprit Shanna Hillsman was finally arrested. Surveillance footage revealed that on three separate occasions between January the 13th and February the 1st of 2019, Hillsman entered people's driveways and tried to break into their cars. When law enforcement caught the 32-year-old on February the 1st, she was in possession of various tools including a screwdriver, hammer and flashlight. She was jailed on charges of burglary, criminal trespass and possession of burglary tools. In her mugshot, Hillsman was photographed with her two middle fingers up and directed at the camera. Records indicated that she was then transported to a correctional facility while awaiting a court date. Number 12. Misty Lohman 40-year-old Misty Lohman from Bowling Green, Kentucky, ended up in handcuffs after showing up to court intoxicated. On July the 2nd of 2019, Noman was appearing before a judge in connection with a previous arrest. According to police, when her purse was searched, security found a small bag of what was suspected to be crystal meth. She claimed it was crushed Zofran, a medication used to prevent nausea. Nevertheless, Loman was charged with public intoxication, possession of a controlled substance and possession of drug paraphernalia. She was booked at the Warren County Regional Jail on a $1,000 bond. After her mugshot was published online, it went viral because of her severe facial features, which had been worsened by heavy drug use. In an interview with WBKO in October of 2020, Lohman said she was trying to turn her life around and had been sober for 14 months. She revealed that she'd been in and out of jail 15 times throughout her life. The woman added that it wasn't just addiction to meth, that changed her physical appearance, but also various autoimmune diseases, including bone cancer, lupus, and sclerodoma. Number 11. Michelle Allen Police in Middletown, Ohio, arrested a woman wearing a cow suit on the night of September the 27th of 2008. 32-year-old Michelle Allen, dressed as a bovine, was chasing children in the 3100 block of Wilbraham Road and also urinated on a neighbor's porch. After law enforcement responded, an officer ordered the woman to go home. Then, at around 11 p.m., police were called to the 2400 block of North Verity Avenue after receiving reports that Allen was blocking traffic. The resulting arrest report indicated that Allen had the smell of alcohol on her breath, slurred speech, a belligerent attitude, and verbally abused officers. Local police noted that this was Allen's 50th time being arrested. Major Mark Hoffman said that even after that many arrests, it was still a surprise to see Allen back in handcuffs. The woman appeared in court days after her arrest, still wearing the cow suit she donned in her booking photo and was reportedly telling people to suck her udders. Allen pleaded guilty to one count of disorderly conduct and was sentenced to 30 days behind bars. Investigators said that they believed the reason she was wearing the costume was because she'd been engaged in some promotional activities for a local haunted trail. Number 10. Dustin Jacob Williams On the afternoon of April the 24th, of 2006. Oregon man Dustin Jacob Williams was arrested for brandishing what appeared to be a handgun outside a school in Beaverton. According to law enforcement, the 20-year-old who was wearing red and black face paint allegedly pressed the gun into a student's stomach in the parking lot of Conestoga Middle School. He then pointed the weapon at the building and pulled the trigger before riding off on his skateboard. Parents who witnessed the incident reported it to the police and the school briefly went into lockdown. Williams was later apprehended a few blocks away. He was in possession of a BB gun, which had been made to look like a Glock. He told police that he was showing the replica gun to friends before admitting that he probably shouldn't have been doing it near a school. In his mugshot, Williams was still wearing the red and black face paint and flashed a ghoulish grin for the camera. Number 9. Brooks Royal a man who was arrested for crashing his car at a railroad crossing in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, appeared to be smiling and waving his hand in his resulting mugshot. The incident unfolded shortly before 2 a.m. on March the 25th of 2019, when 36-year-old Brooks Royal crashed his vehicle on the train tracks near Vine Street with his car stuck. Royal fled the scene but was later tracked down and taken into custody. He was booked at the Dearborn County Law Enforcement Center, charged with leaving the scene of an accident and operating while intoxicated. According to an arrest affidavit, deputies observed that the suspect had unsteady balance, slurred speech, 
bloodshot eyes and emanated a strong odor of alcohol. By the next morning, the sheriff's office website had posted a new mugshot of Royal, in which he was no longer smiling. Number 8. Nicholas Ruthenberg Florida man Nicholas Ruthenberg was accused of crashing his car while driving the wrong way down a street in Vero Beach on the afternoon of August the 30th of 2021. After 25-year-old Ruthenberg slammed his car into an oncoming vehicle, he fled the scene on foot but was subsequently apprehended and taken to the Indian River County Sheriff's Office. The other motorist was rushed to the hospital but reportedly had no life-threatening injuries. Upon arrival at the Sheriff's Office, Ruthenberg refused to remain still while posing for a booking photo and was shown struggling with officers as the picture was taken. Several officers held the man's head in an attempt to get him to face the camera. Ruthenberg consented to a breathalyzer test which showed that no alcohol was in his system. He was then asked to provide a urine sample to determine if there were any chemical or controlled substances present. The arrest report indicated that when he was asked to provide the sample, he began to take his pants off and spread his buttocks. Unable to determine the cause of Ruthenberg's odd behavior, the investigators brought in a drug recognition expert. According to the expert, Ruthenberg's erratic behavior was consistent with someone under the influence of a central nervous system stimulant. Ruthenberg was charged with leaving the scene of an accident causing serious bodily injury and DUI. After posting a $2,000 bond, he remained free while awaiting his arraignment at the Indian River County Courthouse, where he'd reportedly gotten married just hours before the wrong way car crash. Number 7. Gabriel Harris in November of 2014, Gabriel Harris's booking image in which he appeared with a wounded forehead and a big frown captured the media's attention. The 33-year-old and his wife were at a Taco Bell drive through in New Smyrna Beach, Florida in the early hours of November the 16th. Harris was inebriated and got into an altercation at the drive through after staff allegedly refused to take his order. Workers subsequently dialed 911 and told the dispatcher that the couple were shaking a window trying to break it open. The staff also claimed that the couple were taking pictures of the employees and that they refused to leave when asked to do so. When officers arrived, they found Harris on a bicycle near the menu speaker. After asking him to leave, they spotted a red Swiss army knife on his belt and tried to reach for it. Harris grabbed the officer's wrist and was wrestled to the ground, at which point he was placed under arrest. He reportedly suffered a scraped forehead as a result of the physical struggle. Harris was booked into jail on a $1,000 bond, charged with resisted arrest with violence. Days later, his wife, Sarah Halliburton, claimed that the police had used excessive force during the arrest, saying they were unnecessarily brutal. Halliburton was reportedly planning to file a formal complaint about the officer's treatment of her husband. Number 6. Kelsey Stephen Smith In Kelsey Stephen Smith's mugshot taken on June the 19th of 2012, he was bloody and stuck his tongue out while officers tried holding his head forward. Earlier, Florida deputies had responded to a Deltona intersection where they found a silver Audi that was parked but still running. Smith was sitting in the driver's seat and smelled of alcohol, according to the incident report. When the 29-year-old was asked to participate in field sobriety exercises, he refused to exit the car. He subsequently became resistant and was tasered twice before being placed in handcuffs. While being transported to the station, Smith apparently cracked his own face on the roof of the patrol car. Once Smith's nose started to bleed, he spit blood at several deputies telling them he had AIDS. Officials said that the man also claimed to have hepatitis C and was purposely contaminating the patrol car. At the station, Smith continued to struggle with deputies. The Daily Mirror reported that eventually his none too pleasant image was taken. Smith was charged with driving under the influence and obstructing officers without violence. He was held on $2,500 and $1,000 cash bonds for the charges, respectively. Number 5. Sherry Ann DePino. On August the 21st of 2015, police were dispatched to 289 Main Street in the Brookview Terrace Condominium Development in Spotswood, New Jersey, in connection with a disturbance report. When officers arrived, shortly after 9 p.m., they allegedly found Sherry Ann DePino, Michael DePino, and Esther Nitch 
drinking alcohol in the parking lot while the former played loud music from her car. Sherry Ann, who was in her late 40s, began yelling at the officers and refusing to comply with their orders, which included turning down the music. Michael also refused to comply, causing the situation to escalate. Michael and Sherry Ann, whom police said were intoxicated, were arrested and charged with interference with police. The pair, together with Nitch, were also facing charges of public consumption of alcohol. Sherry Ann, who stuck her tongue out in her booking photo, was additionally charged with being a public nuisance. Records indicated that all three were processed and released while awaiting a date in municipal court. Number 4. Dwayne Longacre After a five-day crime spree, 27-year-old Dwayne Longacre from Plymouth, Indiana, was arrested on January the 31st of 2012. Law enforcement reportedly spotted Longacre driving a stolen vehicle. When they tried to pull him over, he sprayed anhydrous ammonia from a tank in the vehicle, leaving multiple officers with burning eyes and difficulty breathing. The ensuing high-speed pursuit ended when Longacre mounted the sidewalk, cleared a stone wall and crashed into a tree. He then bolted from the totaled car and dove into a nearby river. He was subsequently pulled out of the water, handcuffed, and transported to a hospital for treatment of the injuries he sustained in the crash. While at the hospital, Longacre was outfitted with a yellow crayon bandage, which was later shown in his mugshot. He was booked at the St. Joseph County Jail on several charges, including auto theft, possession of a handgun, and assault in law enforcement. Indiana Department of Correction jail records indicated that Longacre was found guilty of the charges and sentenced to a total of two years of incarceration. Number 3. Terrell Barkley Terrell Barkley's mugshot showcased the horrific burns he suffered in a car crash in Bethlehem Township, Pennsylvania that killed three of his passengers during the early hours of May the 6th of 2016. Local police spotted the 28-year-old's vehicle speeding along Freemansburg Avenue. As he was tailed by an officer, Barkley reportedly reached speeds of up to 100 miles per hour. He eventually turned onto Willow Park Road, where he slammed into three parked cars causing his own vehicle to burst into flames. He crawled out of the burning wreckage and collapsed in a fiery heap in a nearby garden. His passengers, Joshua Edwards, Amanda Martin, and Ashley Mosher, all in their late 20s, died from blunt force trauma. Police recovered a small bag of marijuana in Barclay's clothing and a gun, which investigators later learned was stolen. Blood tests revealed that Barclay had a blood alcohol level of 0.019%. The test also indicated that marijuana and bath salts were in his system at the time of the wreck. He spent two months at Lehigh Valley Hospital in a medically induced coma. He was then transferred to an Eastern Rehabilitation Center. Barkley left the center in early September of 2016 before authorities had formally charged him. Police subsequently put out a public appeal to locate him and he surrendered on September the 14th. He wore a neck and arm brace and was covered in bandages. He faced charges that included homicide by vehicle while under the influence, accidents involving death with a suspended license, drunken driving, and illegal possession of a firearm by a felon, among other offenses. On November the 22nd of the following year, Barkley pleaded guilty to three counts of vehicular homicide while driving under the influence. He was given a state prison sentence of 12 to 30 years. Number 2. Laurie Vallow Notorious murder suspect Laurie Vallow's latest mugshot, taken in March of 2023, sparked a frenzy among online sleuths who spotted a number of changes to her physical appearance since she was last arrested. Vallow from Rexburg, Idaho, had been in Madison County Jail since March of 2020 after she and her husband, Chad Daybell, were charged with three counts of murder. The couple, who were allegedly part of a doomsday cult, were accused of killing Vallow's two children, Tylee and JJ, along with Daybell's ex-wife, Tammy. Tylee and JJ were last seen in September of 2019, and Tammy died of asphyxiation the following month. Vallow and Daybell never reported the children missing, and when they were questioned about it in November, they jetted off to Hawaii, where they got married. Early in 2020, Vallow was arrested in Hawaii and extradited back to Idaho, charged with desertion and non-support of her children. 
During the search of Daybell's home on June the 9th, Tylee and JJ's remains were recovered. Daybell was subsequently arrested and charged with destruction or concealment of evidence. On March the 22nd of 2023, Valor was moved to Ada County Jail, where she was held in temporary custody. In her chilling mugshot, her appearance had drastically changed. Her eyebrows had been crudely drawn, her wrinkles were more pronounced, and the smile she flashed for her previous booking photo was nowhere to be found. A Twitter user joked that Valo had aged 20 years since her arrest. Another said that her jailhouse makeup was something else. On May the 12th of 2023, Valo was found guilty of all charges related to the killing of her children. Two months later, she was sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. As for Daybell, he remained in custody at the Fremont County Jail while awaiting trial. We have our release on when celebrity lookalikes go wrong lined up for you after number one. Don't go anywhere if you'd like to watch that one too. It's a good one. Number one, Hazel Rojas. An Illinois woman charged with DUI in West Suburban Riverside gave the middle finger. When police tried to take her booking photo, 44-year-old Hazel Rojas was driving her Land Rover along South Harlem Avenue shortly before 3.30 a.m. On June the 17th of 2016, a Riverside police officer observed her neglect to proceed through a traffic light that had turned green. According to the police, when the officer pulled up behind her vehicle, she began driving well below the speed limit while straddling the traffic lanes. The police officer subsequently stopped Rojas, at which point he smelled a strong odor of alcohol from inside the vehicle and on the woman's breath. Rojas was given a field sobriety test, which she failed. When asked if she'd been drinking, she said that she hadn't and claimed that alcohol had spilled on her clothing earlier in the night. At one point, she reportedly lost her balance and almost fell into the arms of the officer. It was also discovered that she was in possession of diazepam. After being taken into custody, Rojas refused to take a breathalyzer test. When she was told that she was under arrest, she began to verbally abuse the officers and told them she had friends on the force. She also complained of a shoulder injury and was taken to McNeil Hospital in Berwyn for medical treatment. However, no injuries were found and she was then returned to police custody for booking. Police said that Rojas made the booking process very difficult, refusing to have her picture taken. After displaying vulgar hand gestures, she spit and vomited in front of the arresting officers. In addition to the DUI charge, she was also charged with driving under the influence of drugs and cited for traffic violations. As part of the arrest, her Land Rover was impounded. Number 8. Jason Sanderling In September of 2022, a young man bearing a striking resemblance to pop icon Harry Styles was arrested for robbery and assault in New York. On January the 21st, Jason Sandlin broke down the door of an apartment in Tyrone and ordered three people to get on the floor while holding them at gunpoint with an assault rifle. The 21-year-old struck a woman in the head with the firearm and groped her breasts after she tried to resist being zip-tied. He made off from the apartment with a stash of marijuana and a few hundred dollars in cash. Sanderling subsequently posted a Snapchat video of the stolen drugs, which he subsequently also tried to sell. The man was identified by his long-time girlfriend, with whom he'd allegedly carried out an earlier robbery in Altoona. Law enforcement took him into custody on multiple charges that included robbery, criminal trespass, indecent assault, and aggravated assault. His mugshot attracted attention online due to his resemblance to Styles, with the most noticeable difference being that Sandlin had the number 33 tattooed on the side of his forehead. Another distinction was that, in person, the robber was roughly six inches shorter than the former One Direction singer. Number 7. Todd Barrick The photo of a man wanted for violating his parole went viral in the fall of 2019 due to his likeness to a character from a hit TV series. The Galesburg Police Department in Illinois shared the mugshot of 50-year-old Todd Barrick and online users immediately noticed a resemblance to Walter White, the protagonist played by Brian Cranston of the critically acclaimed and massively popular series Breaking Bad. Their likeness extended beyond the bald head and goatee, as Barrick was wanted for methamphetamine possession while the character on the show, a chemistry teacher, began producing methamphetamine after being diagnosed with cancer. One commenter jokingly suggested that the police look for Barrick in Albuquerque, 
where the action in this series unfolded. The mugshot attracted the attention of international press and was even featured on late-night comedy shows. Barrick remained at large for several months, following the photo circulation, before he was eventually arrested in Des Moines, Iowa, in early December. Number 6. Abdullah Husseini In October of 2018, law enforcement in Blackpool, England, posted a photo to its Facebook of a suspected thief, captured by CCTV in a local supermarket. Before long, the photo of the man holding a beer carton while looking into the camera was shared millions of times and had amassed tens of thousands of comments. Due to the suspect's resemblance to Ross Geller, David Schwimmer's character on the sitcom Friends, Schwimmer himself brought further attention to the original post by uploading a spoof video to his Twitter, reenacting the photo. He scurried through a convenience store while holding a beer carton. Before looking straight into the camera, the actor explained that he couldn't have been responsible for theft since he was in New York and then wished the police good luck in their investigation. In November, the lookalike was arrested and later named as 36-year-old Abdullah Husseini. Burnley Crown Court was told that he'd swiped a wallet from a customer's jacket at a restaurant and then used the card found inside to make several fraudulent purchases before he was caught in the act of buying beer by CCTV at an Iceland store. Husseini, originally from Slough, was described as nomadic and a habitual thief with a predisposition towards stealing alcohol. He had 32 previous convictions for 60 offenses since 2008, 27 of which were for theft and dishonesty. It took a jury less than three hours to convict him for the viral incident, and he was consequently jailed for nine months. Number 5. Corey Webb While walking to a local Goodwill to buy comics, on New Year's Eve 2016, a high-functioning autistic man from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, was ambushed by a robber. As reported by the unnamed victim, the suspect jumped out of a doorway, held a pistol to his head and demanded he hand over a pair of headphones. The robber also took $20 from the victim, threatening to kill him for it. When asked to describe his attacker, the man claimed he looked like Shaggy from the Scooby-Doo cartoon series. The police knew exactly to whom he was referring and identified the robber as Corey Webb. Local law enforcement had been called several times in the past by concerned residents and store owners who'd found Webb passed out due to his addiction to K2, a form of synthetic cannabis. He was subsequently arrested and charged with felony armed robbery. The shaggy lookalike was booked into Milwaukee County Jail on a $1,000 cash bond and faced up to 25 years behind bars. Number 4. Lawrence Sullivan A Florida man emulating the Joker through his green hair and face tattoos was arrested in May of 2017 by law enforcement in Miami-Dade County, Florida. Police in Miami responded to reports of a man pointing a handgun at traffic in the 15200 block of Southwest 104th Street on May the 23rd. The Batman villain-inspired suspect, later identified as 29-year-old Lawrence Sullivan, had fled by the time that officers arrived at the scene. His facial artwork included the word Joker tattooed on his forehead next to a Batman symbol with a knife through it, as well as permanent clown makeup and the signature scarred smile. Officers subsequently located him walking out the front gate of the Hammocks Place apartment complex. Upon being approached by them, Sullivan revealed that he had a firearm in his pocket. An officer reached inside and found a Smith & Wesson handgun loaded with six rounds. When asked why he didn't get a concealed carry permit, Sullivan, who described his occupation as being a tattoo model, claimed it was too expensive. He denied having waved the pistol at passing cars and claimed that he only had it for protection. Sullivan was charged with carrying a concealed firearm and booked at the Turner Guilford Knight Correctional Center on a $5,000 bond. He had a number of past arrests, including one for marijuana possession in 2013. Sullivan's mugshot at the time was dramatically different from his most recent one as it showed his face free of any tattoos. He was eventually bonded out of jail where he claimed to have been treated like a celebrity due to his unusual appearance. Less than 18 months later, Sullivan was arrested once more in Pinellas County after a warrant had been put out for yet another concealed carry firearm offense. Number 3. Tara Hanlon 
a British woman, was arrested at Heathrow Airport on October 2, 2020, as she was trying to smuggle a large amount of cash out of England. Once news of Tara Hanlon's arrest began to spread, British media labelled her a Kim Kardashian lookalike. It was reported that the 30-year-old had gotten plastic surgery and other cosmetic procedures in order to bring her physical appearance closer to that of her idol. While the end result of her efforts to emulate the socialite was disputable, Hanlon's criminal activity was beyond a shadow of a doubt, as she was caught trying to smuggle over $2.7 million from London to Dubai. The cash had been vacuum-packed in five suitcases and covered in ground coffee to hide the smell from sniffer dogs. When initially asked about her extensive luggage by a customs official, Hanlon claimed she wasn't sure what to wear upon reaching her destination. The ensuing find was the largest individual cash seizure at the UK border that year, and the police determined that the money came from organized crime. During her initial interview, the media dubbed lookalike claimed that it was her first trip denied having been paid to smuggle the cash and expressed the belief that her actions were legal, since the money would be declared in Dubai. However, subsequent analysis of her phone indicated that she'd made three previous visits in July and August as a courier and was paid over $3,000 for each of them. In a message to an unidentified source, she'd boasted three big ones. With this wage and the next, my debts go by. And in another, claimed that the criminal activity afforded her the perfect life. The total amount she'd smuggled, excluding the final failed effort, totaled close to $4 million. Several other people were arrested and charged as part of the same money laundering operation. Hanlon eventually pleaded guilty to multiple counts of removing criminal property for which she was sentenced to 34 months in prison. Number 2. Luminitsa Perijok in 2012, Luminitsa Perijok, from the city of Tulsia, Romania, hired taxi driver Nicole Stan to deliver some shopping bags to her apartment. Once the delivery was completed, 30-year-old Perijok asked for the man's number so that she could elicit his services again. A few hours later, she asked him to bring several bottles of wine to her apartment. The woman, whom local and foreign media later dubbed an Angelina Jolie lookalike, grabbed Stan upon his arrival and dragged him into the apartment. She demanded that the married father of three have intercourse with her and pulled out a four-inch knife when he refused. Stan twice performed as commanded, but Pelagioc reportedly wanted more and stabbed the man repeatedly when he couldn't go through with it. He eventually managed to barricade himself in the bedroom and called the emergency services, who rescued him from the apartment. Pelagioc was arrested and during the ensuing trial maintained that she'd actually been the victim a claim which was rejected by the court. She was jailed for five years, but the sentence was ultimately suspended for four years on appeal after it was determined that her behavior had been influenced by medication she'd been taking at the time. Stan, however, argued that he'd been given a life sentence of being teased by his friends, whom he claimed didn't understand why he'd refused someone they deemed a very attractive woman. On that topic, the 35-year-old told a media outlet, I think anyone would find it impossible to perform with a knife at their throat, even if they were with Miss Romania. Number 1. Fidel Gonzalez Gutierrez In late March of 2017, an arrest in Florida drew attention on the internet due to the suspect's strong resemblance to Santa Claus. 58-year-old Fidel Gonzalez Gutierrez from Marathon had been wanted on six outstanding warrants related to the trafficking of cocaine. As reported by a spokesperson for the Monroe County Sheriff's Office, the Santa Claus lookalike had sold the illegal substance to an undercover officer multiple times between late February and early March. Gonzalez Gutierrez, whose occupation was listed as fisherman by local law enforcement, had carried out his dealings near a church which resulted in further charges. He faced six counts of selling cocaine within a thousand feet of a place of worship, in addition to four counts of using a two-way communication device to facilitate a felony. Once his mugshot began circulating online, a number of users quipped about the Florida man, suggesting he should put himself on the naughty list or that he'd been dreaming of a different kind of white Christmas. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be named one of the world's most beautiful people but have a terminal illness or be in perfect health but generally considered ugly? Let us know in the comments section below.